Good morning and welcome along to another episode of this Dundee United FM21 story. It's probably going to be a bit of a disaster this morning because we're starting the season in pretty bad shape. We already know that the board aren't that happy with us because of what happened at the end of last season. We missed out on third. We ended up in the Europa Conference playoff. And there we've got a disastrous draw probably against Olympiakos, which isn't going to make it any easier this morning. If we go out there... Could have an early season sacking. We start the season against Rangers, followed by three consecutive away games in the league. So I've got a feeling this is going to be a tough one. So what better time to try a big tactical experiment than now? I think it's the best time we're going to try something completely different after the 4-4-2 fell away last season. And we'll see how well we get on. It could be interesting to say the least. But thank you to those of you who are waiting with me. I do appreciate it. Please do chuck a thumbs up on the video if you haven't already. The Sunday morning stroll, I've struggled to get up this morning, so you'll bear with the bed hair. But we'll get by, and we'll probably get spanked by Rangers as well. So fingers crossed it won't be too bad. Let's go and have a look, though, at the transfer window, because we did have the special last time. We've got a couple of little bits to get through first, which we don't always get to see. But there's a couple of potential deals coming in. One is a coach, or a scout, sorry, who needs a work permit. We were putting a big money bid for a Celtic striker, didn't work out the 16-year-old. And Jason Malumbi potentially joining on loan, but I don't know if I want to break the budget for him yet. L Gaming, good morning, welcome along, thank you for popping in. The Football Channel, welcome along, appreciate you joining in this morning. The number's creeping up very quickly today. I suppose I've harmed myself by starting on time, which I don't always do. That centre-half from your Exum say plays for Everton now, wow. That's a quick um, rise through the ranks. Ronak, good morning. Welcome along. Appreciate you coming in. Lovely to see some of the regulars and some new faces as well. If you haven't already, please chuck a thumbs up on it. Come and get involved in the chat because I'm sure once they all wake up at about quarter to 11 o'clock, all the regulars will be in. Dan Ashworth, good morning. Thanks for popping in as well. Brilliant name as well. I'm, I'm sure a couple of my uh, my power regulars are watching the, uh, the cricket at the moment as it's on free-to-air TV for the first time in ages. So in terms of the transfers themselves, we didn't really have a great deal going on. We have one at the end of last year, which we knew about. Jason Kerr joined on a free. He came in from St. Johnston at the end of his contract. We had a few going out, mostly on frees and a couple on loan as well. And in this season, the sale of Simon Eastwood, a few players out on loan, and particularly Kai Fotheringham, who was one of the, the hot prospects, particularly Logan Chalmers. He falls in that category as well to newly promoted Hibs. But only four players in. Morgan Boys, Anthony Ralston, two backup fullbacks. Jason, Jacob Davenport in midfield for 100 grand. Just gives us a bit more solidity. He's a decent player and he's got room to grow. And in Sariki Dembele, it was the marquee free signing. And if you didn't remember at the end of yesterday, or the end of Tuesday's episode, sorry, he's now out for four months with a broken ankle. So not the best start for him, but we'll find a way. Uh, LK, and he signed for four mil. I had a sell-on clause, but didn't. Ah, oh, it's fair enough. The Football Channel, I've missed every live stream, but watch them when they're on your channel. I appreciate the kind words, and I appreciate you catching up. Thanks for giving them a try. Uh, Ronak, I enjoy watching you. You're all too kind this morning. Do appreciate it. Uh, it's been a great game. I'm watching the cricket while, while watching you. Absolutely. It's the best way to do it. I've been doing that as well. Uh, Daniel, loving the build in the nation. You think you can get into the Champions League anytime soon? It's so hard to tell with them qualifiers. It's just the luck of the draw. But last time we got Malmo, who were one of the very strongest sides who were uh, seeded for it. If this year, for example, that we're about to start, we get, let's say, Ludogrets, who we've beaten in the Europa Conference group stage. We get, I'm trying to think who else is there. Maybe like a Dinamo Brest from Belarus. Uh, Lahn from Northern Ireland, who would be similar to us. We just need a lucky draw. That's all it takes. And it will happen one year, but it won't then happen consistently. But the thing is, I think we've got to the stage now where hopefully we'll be able to get to the, the Europa Conference group stages almost every year. Uh, the Football Channel is good that you're doing Scotland because I'm from there. And of course, in the head coach, we ended up at Scotland for our first four clubs this year. Something that hasn't happened before. I think just because the, the job's unemployed at the data lock for the new game was after Scotland had started their season, but before England had. So none of the English managers have been sacked. But it's ended up being good to us, so I've really enjoyed it. Uh, Ronak, I'm from India. Ah, oh, so are you watching the cricket as well? Or are you are you not a cricket fan? 
We're all enjoying it over here. It's been a good game, actually. And thank you, you're a new country again. 23rd on the list since the new game came out. Uh, L Gaming's enjoying England v India as well. That's exactly what Tom will be doing. He's normally in. Uh, what do you think about Manchester United last night? Very much the same, to be honest. It's the same frailties defensively. It's always the... The back post defending from crosses. I still don't understand why... Well, I do. I don't understand why Henderson isn't number one on form. I think De Gea is still number one because they're they're desperately trying to get him in a good spell of form so someone will come in and buy him. But at the expense of risking your title race, it seems weird. <clears throat> uh, do you know Morton in the championship? I do. Actually, I spoke to a... Because we on our podcast channel, we do interviews with a few pros. I spoke to a former Morton player called Alan Jenkins, who played for Stranraer Coaches there now. Gretna, which was an interesting story, and Valamina over in Northern Ireland. But yeah, Morton's a club we know well. One of my school friends, actually, in Luton had a trial there, bizarrely, as a kid, and almost moved up to Scotland. So yeah, Morton's a club we know quite well, actually. But a good team, and a good club, and a big club. Uh, United, they did bottle it, unfortunately, but... There's still a lot of quality there. It's just such a shame. They're, they're only a couple of players away. And at the start of the season, they were four, five or six away. So it's progress nonetheless. <coughs> Let's go and get into the first game of the season, shall we? Because a few of you are going to want to see an experimental tactic. So interestingly, the Rangers side has Tony Weston up front, who we had on loan at Hibs in the head coach. We've still got a lot of quality in there, having won the title both years. But are you ready for this? This is our new tactic. Now, those who have been on the channel a while will know I complain all the time about not being able to get a back three working. And that's exactly what we're going to go for. We're going to go for the back three. We've got most of the lads approaching fitness, but not quite there yet. And hopefully this will be the game it happens. Uh, Cal, good morning. Welcome along. Binge watched all episodes from Bangor City. Really enjoying it. Favourite FM channel now. Very kind of you. Do appreciate it. Uh, Ronak, sign Ivan Tony. I wish. I don't think we can afford him, unfortunately. Uh, so if we look at our budget, £2 million. Pounds. Ivan Tony, he's got to be a Premier League player by now. He's still at Brentford. £13 million he's worth. And he's on twenty grand a week. Our top player's on about four and a half. So unfortunately, we're nowhere near that level yet. It's just one of those sad things. We have got the returning loanies of Ted and Mengi, who stays on for another year, is improving at the back. Matheson and Mitchell, who are the two wing-backs for today, they're also in a good position. Mitchell not quite as confident in the wing-back role as Matheson is, but I think they'll both be all right. So this is the lineup we've gone for. We have got a bit of a problem in the sense that Benji Segrist has got a knock. So we're without our first-choice keeper, and that means our backup is Jack Newman. We sold Simon Eastwood, we promoted a youngster, and he's in for the first game against Rangers. He wouldn't have expected that. We've got Mockery on the bench, alongside new signings, Davenport and Boys. We've also got Darren Watson on the bench. On loan at air last year, got top scorer in the SPL. So he's going to be someone we're looking out for. But aside from that, we've tried to fit Kerr in with our brilliant three defenders. They are probably, outside of Shanklin, the three best players at the club. So we have to take advantage. Mitchell and Matheson, the wing-backs, look good. It's just whether the tactical setup works. And then O'Reilly and Mallon burning the number 10. And Shankland and McNulty up front. We need to have a bit more of a, a potent start in front of goal this season. We're going to change the lads to stay on their feet. Because this is largely a preset tactic. We're still going to counter at speed. We're still going to move the tempo up. And we're going to be quite narrow. Which is something we're really not used to doing. So this is a big opportunity for us. It's against Rangers, which is a bit of a free swing. It's just whether we can hold on. That's the main question. Uh, that's very similar, if not the same, to Wrexham's formation. It's not a million miles away, actually, is it? Uh, Ronak, Harvey Elliott, I think he'll be out of budget as well. Uh, Jordan Davis, Cliftonville signed him. Jordan Davis, your uh, Wrexham star. I doubt he's doing well in here, given the way that Wrexham have been playing. He doesn't really suit the tactic either because he can't play wing back and he's nowhere near good enough, unfortunately. In terms of Harvey Elliott, I'll show you him quickly. Obviously, we don't use the player search screen, so we wouldn't be signing these guys. But Harvey Elliott was in the Liverpool squad last year. 16 league appearances, two goals. He's out of our league. He's a wonder kid. At 19, he's worth 27 million. 
is going to be some player, isn't he? And again, we wouldn't change the tactic for him at this stage. We've got to rely on a free centre-half, so we're the best players at the club. So thank you for all the support. It's lovely to be in double figures after a few minutes, as always. Please do chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't already. Uh, on FM for me last season. Did I sign him last season? Oh, he did, didn't he? It was after when we looked five years in the future. And he'd already signed for the club again. And they'd, they'd spent like a million pound on him, hadn't they? You're right, you've jogged my memory. Let's get into the first game of the day, though. This is going to be either a moment of genius or an absolute disaster. I'm a little bit worried in the sense that I think it might be the latter. But let's go and find out, shall we? A couple of good options on the bench. A good few options in the squad. It's just whether we can compete on the day. It's as close to our first team as possible. Bar the keeper. Possibly bar Davenport when he's fit. But let's get the boys out there. Get them to impress us. Into the game we go. Rangers unbeaten in three against us. Surprised it's only that, to be honest. Shanklin kicks off to Byrne. Mallon goes back to Kerr, the centre-half. I'm really interested to see how the back three works. That's not quite the mixed passing we were looking for. That was just a, an aimless hoof. As Ryan Jack comes through the middle. This is the area I'm worried about. As Weston goes back into midfield. And our three centre midfielders have been caught a bit narrow. And if we're going to defend narrow, we've got to then defend the box well. So Gilbert's got the chance to cross. Finley intercepts to Arrivo. Back to Jack. And if you've got three centre-halves in and you can't defend a cross to two men, it's going to be a long season. Less than one minute on the clock we're behind already. Oh, my word. Uh, grassroots coach, good morning. Dylan, good morning as well. Thank you for popping in. Uh, this snow hype and its delivery in Barnet has been like Juventus in Champions League finals. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, El Gaming, you're spot on. I completely forgot about that the five years on. Thank you for all the extra thumbs up as well. Do appreciate having you here this morning. We've got five games to get through, hopefully, as we're two down in 15 minutes. <clears throat> I don't know if this is the backup keeper, if this is not quite being there yet. But where we're sort of sacrificing the place out wide, I don't know that we're actually good enough in the middle to cope with it. As O'Reilly switches right to Matheson. Chance to get a goal at least. Matheson can cross, maybe even a shot on target. Let's get it to Mallon. Edge of the box, right-hand side. Scored on his debut in Turkey, of course. Into Mitchell, who's unmarked, but it's miles over the bar. And that's where you need a, a wing-back who's a bit better going forward. Having said that, outside of the possession, we've not been too bad on the stats here. And we are playing against the champions, so I'm tempted to give it a go for a few more games yet. I just worry about the width. I worry about the, the areas we're conceding quality. Of course, we've got to keep our eye on Hamilton, who finished third last year. We're looking out for the likes of Aberdeen and Hibs, who have come back up, to see if any of them have a good season. But at half-time, <clears throat> it wasn't great. I don't think it's any more disastrous than we would normally have against Rangers, but we'll see. Uh, Kamashin, hello again. Lovely to have you in, as always. Uh, Joe Hugill, can't afford him, I'm afraid, either. Uh, Elgame, enjoy Angus' class. He's a good player, really is. Uh, Daniel Ashworth started a Chertanovo Moscow game yesterday. It's pretty difficult. Wow. What tier are they in? Whereabouts? I always like the interesting ones. As Mitchell gets it into McNulty. Can we get a goal? Just over an hour gone. We'll make some subs in a minute. Shankland off the keeper. Burn on the rebound. Has missed an open goal. Back to Stevie Mallon. And he gives it away with a silly back heel. But this is where the problem is. Look, Rangers have kept their men wide. And we just can't cope with it. Kerwin's the tackle this time, but it's the only thing that stops them getting in. A very strange game. There are some flaws here. Uh, Paul Thompson, good morning. Thank you for popping in. Lovely to see all the new faces and the regulars. Uh, Dylan, the keeper can't be worse than Jamie Jones for Wigan. Yeah, that's a fair point, actually. Um, we had him in the... I'm even talking FM in our beta save, the few games he played. And then he got in a strop as well. Um, but I do feel for the Wigan players because there's a lot going on off the pitch as well to contend with. Uh, Dylan, were you watching the snooker shootout last night? Ironically, no. It's one of the only snooker tournaments I can't get into. I'm a bit more of a purist. I prefer the, the traditional style. But I love the snooker, generally. And I'll watch it most weeks. Uh, I've got Monday off work as well, so I'm hoping there's a new tournament next week. 
Uh, Daniel, second tier in Russia, but you can't sign players. Oh, lovely. I do love a save like that. I will give you a very sneak preview here on the channel. Is next season, the save I delayed from this year and replaced with Banga is potentially a fairly local club who are just below the north or south. And I was aiming to do a, a save where we only sign players that would become homegrown at the club. Because where we've done it with sort of Torquay and Dorkin, I know Dorkin, we never actually got to the very top. But with Torquay, we got there quite quickly. And I, I, I don't want to necessarily get to the top. I want to see how hard it can be. So for that save, that was my sort of idea with it. We'd sign players who were homegrown at the club, 18 or under, all the players that are already there or come through the academy. So that's something I'm thinking about for next year because we've done a couple of Builder Nations now. And I'm missing my, my classic one club story. So I'll be back in England for that next year. Whoppers, good morning. Welcome along. Thank you for popping in. Hope you're all getting on well. Uh, L Gaming beat top of the table Blackpool 4-0 in League 1. All lovely. That's not a bad start, is it? So let's have a look at what we can do here. Jack Byrne has been horrific in the number 10. So we're going to bring on Mockery. I'm also going to bring on Darren Watson for McNulty. Because up front, we know he's got goals in him. And he was the top scorer in the league last year. We've got to take advantage of that. In midfield, we've got Mallon and O'Reilly. So I'm going to bring on Davenport. He's more of a sort of ball winner rather than a box-to-box. -box. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to go for. I think this is one of the most important things this season. If we can get into the Europa Conference group stages, we can start to bed some of those youngsters, get them regular football. If we go out, though, we have to play the first team and avoid the sack. As the ball comes out to the right. Apologies, my voice is disappearing. <clears throat> Hatchy puts it in. Oh, it's three. Tony Weston with a free header. Matheson's the one who misses it. And again, three centre-halves and a striker's able to peel onto the wing-back. <coughs> it doesn't make any sense. I've no idea where my voice is going. Until 10 minutes before the stream, it was fine. So apologies if it disappears. Uh, I remember Tom saying the club. I forget. I forgot. Uh... I don't remember. Oh, you, you can't trust my memory. <clears throat> I'm playing ignorance because I'm not telling you. Dylan Newton, uh, I've started the new Wigan save and I'm in my third season in, in the Premier League. Back-to-back -back promotions. Did you get as lucky as me in the, the beta save with the Tycoon takeover? Uh, grassroots coach Bolton risk getting relegated. Madness. We're just sitting waiting on the podcast channel. Ian Everett and I Talk Ranker. We're just sitting waiting for manager specials. We had one of our best ever weeks last week. Fleetwood appointed Simon Grayson and the fans went mad for that episode, which was incredible. We got big numbers on the, the Jason Tindall one for Bournemouth and Jonathan Woodgate coming in. The championship predictions did better than ever. We had the transfer window review, which was new and enjoyable. So there you go. Uh, Daniels, the shootout was decent. Used to play snooker with a few other players on the tour. Oh, go on, name drop. Which runs? I want a name drop there. Uh, the Scottish League is being shown on Sky Sports Italy. Crazy. It's annoying it's only shown on Sky Sports over here. BT used to do a great job with it. I watch the Scottish Championship more now because it's on BBC Scotland every Friday night. So it's normally that or a Northern Irish game. But yeah, I can't really watch the top tier now. It's a bit of a shame. I know we've... It's ironic, on the podcast, we've interviewed the, the main commentator, Ian Crocker, on Sky Sports, but we then haven't got the ability to watch it now, which is so sad this season. Uh, our game, did he sound on Discord, did he? I'm pleading ignorance still. Uh, Dylan, yeah, I just copied you. I signed shot on Sanchez and off a ball. I wouldn't say Sanchez was brilliant, uh, but shot on an off a ball. I mean, off a ball's just gone back to Wickham in real life. Quality player. Shotton's got the long throw, obviously. Damn Ronnie, fair enough. You don't get bigger than that. It's not bad, is it? I've got to say, the snooker tour, the way... And I'll say it for Barry Hearn, actually. The sports, because he's done it with the darts as well. Even though I'm not as big a darts fan, or really a much of a fan at all. The way he's brought the sports back behind closed doors is brilliant. The different feel he's given to it in Milton Keynes is stunning. Ah, oh, you're joking. Oh, yeah, lines. David Grace, yeah, good player. 
There's a few there, aren't there? There's some decent names in there, to be fair. I would have believed you. You should have played the Ronnie Life through. <laughs> Not my um, Snooker 19 career hero on the channel, Sean O'Sullivan. He's the one I'm waiting for. Uh, did you watch the Morton Dunfermly game a couple of weeks ago? I did the most part, yeah. I watched. Um, I also watched Air v Hearts on Friday night. There's so much. I mean, we were talking about it on the Discord. There was so much about the way Hearts set up that baffles me. Air were brilliant, but they just ran out of steam. It's a shame. Uh, Maka, good morning. Thank you for popping in. Lovely to have you here as always. Uh, Dylan, have you ever played Snooker 19? There's a whole series on the channel. You're a newbie, aren't you? There's a, a whole career mode on the channel a couple of years back. It's not my best content. It was before I'd found my style and it's a bit broadcasty and uh, over the top dramatic in terms of voice. But yeah, there's a whole series on the channel. You'll be able to find it on the homepage somewhere, I'm sure, if you want to. I started as the other O'Sullivan on the uh, snooker tour. And there is a more recent one-off episode from about lockdown, April or May, the first lockdown. Which is a snooker shootout one, ironically. So, yeah, there's a couple of bits on there. I love the game, though. It's fantastic. Uh, El Gaming, me, you and him were having a convo on it. And I swear he said on the live. And then, yeah, he might have done, actually. But I'm pleading ignorance now if everyone's forgotten. Have you read about Inter? It's crazy. They're risk going bankrupt. Well, it's similar to Barcelona with the, the outgoings. They've already said, because they had the um, charity sponsor and Rakuten, didn't they? That they were going to look into a bigger one. It does make it really difficult because you live to your means, don't you? So people like Inter and Barca, if they're not preparing for a pandemic, they're living to the top of their means. It's all good saying you've got loads of money, but they're working towards that. And if players are on three, four-year contracts, that takes time to reverse. So that's where it's harder for the, the top clubs. Uh, Maka, Snooker Nighting's fantastic. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. I was going to say the snooker channel, the snooker playlist is somewhere about. It's not the best series, the the career one. The one-off episode a bit later on wasn't bad. Uh, they used to be unreal in the club, but just shows how good the the standard is. They don't get far in competitions. Well, it's not it's not so much the standard, is it? It's the it's the mentality and the concentration that's required. So this is the Barrero who we've been trying to sign for some time. He's now gone to Cardiff as a trialist. He still wants eight grand a week. It's ridiculous. I really don't understand it. Uh, Dylan found it. I hope it's all right. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Uh, what's your favourite Scottish team? Uh, my favourite Scottish team, for some reason I can't explain, was always Hibs. And I, it's not like I'm saying, oh, I really love them and I want them to win everything. I think what it was is when I first started playing management games, Hibs had a brilliant team coming through. So I remember on um, Football Manager 05 or 06 and Premier Manager 05, uh, not Premier, is it Premier Manager? No, FIFA Manager 06 and LMA 03 maybe. They had good teams in all of those. And if they had a good team when I was a kid playing a management game, I always followed the team then. Just one of those weird things. Uh, Ronak signed Neil White. Oh. You might have found someone in budget there. I'm not sure. Oh, he's not showing there. I wonder why. Oh, well. A very, a very interesting reason. Who's that the Celtic have got? Would you look at that? Celtic have signed Josh Benson and paid him five and a half grand a week. Those following the Bangor save will know exactly who he is. I think all these saves show is how far at Bangor we hold the players back by not having brilliant training facilities and brilliant trainers. I mean, hopefully we can start to improve those things soon after our European exploits, but it could be interesting. Uh, have a look at Carl Joseph for a backup striker. I'm not going to sign a backup striker this year because I still want to keep the... I want to keep Watson and Malcolm as the backups. Because he's going to be good. He's not really developed here. He's really not developed in this save, unfortunately. He's not got the personality for it either. He's a good player, but in this save it just hasn't worked. Maybe he's had injuries, I'm not sure. 
Uh, so concussion might have affected him. Because those sort of things have a weird effect in this game. But yeah, it's just not worked out in this one. Right, the Malumbi signing. Do I do it or don't I? Because if we do it and then we don't make it to the European group stages. It'll probably be a disaster. So do you know what? I'm not going to do it. We're going to leave that one for now. It's just trying to find an upgrade in quality without breaking the bank. It's a horrible balancing act. Even clubs that have got relegated, their players are worth millions and millions. It's so frustrating. I was looking at who was it who went down, killed Marnock. And I was trying to sign Eamon Brophy and he's worth millions. It's so annoying. As it stands, I think we're near enough as good as we can be. I don't know who to go for. Harvey Griffiths is there. We had him at Dundee in the um, the head coach. He's got good attributes. But not really any better at the moment than our current players. And that's the frustration. What I am going to start doing is looking at selling some of the other guys. So Carlton Morris, unfortunately, it just hasn't worked. So he's no longer going to be back up. We're going to give Watson and Malcolm the chance this year. Watson was the top scorer last season. Morris doesn't fit into our tactic. So let's sell him. We're going to put him on the transfer list. We are also going to sell. I'm not sure if we want to go for it. I was going to loan out Nielsen. Because we've still got. If we go back to centre half. Which is his actual position. We've got Mengi Finley and Kerr starting. We've got Matty Pearson. We've got Morgan Boyce. Glen Ray can cover. And this is the problem. If we then don't get the European group stages, we're in a rush to try and get these kids out of the club. In centre midfield, we've got loads of players, but none of them are standout. I still don't know whether to sell the wingers or not. You know, we've got... There's so many unanswered questions here. Uh, retired for injury, maybe. Oh, perhaps. It's about time you changed your favourite Scottish team to Sterling Albion. If anything, after speaking to Alan Jenkins, I'd change it to Stramra because he was absolutely brilliant to us. And we had the, um, the, there's a weird situation going on with Dermot O'Carroll. He was working at Motherwell. We'd spoken to him on the podcast, a brilliant footballer and a great coach. But the um, Northern Irish FA made a massive mistake on qualifications needed for a certain role. Gave him the position and then couldn't offer it a day later, which was bizarre. Uh, Wrexham still struggling on this save or not? We're well, starting a new season, isn't it? So it'll be interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell Morris to Wigan because they've offered more money and they're not a rival. So that makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, let's have a look at Wrexham. I think they're still in the north. They stayed down. The season won't have started yet, will it? No. Let's see if they've been big in the window. They're still signing. Tom Field was there in the in the north. Look at the quality of the player. We had him at I had him at Basingstoke, I think, in an off-camera save. And he got to like the championship or Premier League. He's a brilliant footballer. Aaron Bolger. Did we have him at Cliftonville? I feel like we did. Or was it somewhere else? It might have been, I tell you, it might have been Macclesfield last year. I think it might have been Macclesfield that we had him at. But otherwise, they shouldn't be down there. Adi Yusuf has rejoined the club in the third season. That's an interesting one. But yeah, I'm not quite sure what they're doing down there, to be honest. We've got the League Cup second round draw. We have got Kilmarnock away. Yes, they've gone down, but they've not been able to lose their players because they're worth so much money. Brophy being the key example of it. St Mirren away next. That's going to be an interesting tie. Uh, Daniel Hibbs are the same for mine. Reardon, O'Connor, Thompson, Brown, Stevenson. Yeah, they have more there. They have uh, Stephen Whitaker was there at the same time. Who was the centre half? Gary Caldwell might have been there as well in one of those. I'm trying to think who else there was. Oh, they had Ivan Sprawl on the right wing who had like, on this save he had 19 for pace and on FIFA manager he was unstoppable because of the same thing. We've got an injury to Tyrick Mitchell which means we're without that. 
But yeah, some cracking players around then. Maka do it. <laughs> what they should add is the ability to pay for two training facilities at the same time if you have the money. Yeah, it's something that annoyed me with Banger because we've made four or five million after making nothing is we want to almost make one or two or three jumps. But then the youth facility one was much bigger, which makes me think that they perhaps did that. I'm not sure. It's always interesting to know because it's not something we normally look at. Uh, are Morton doing good? I'll have a look in a minute on here, actually. Uh, is it possible to release players on FM? Yeah, of course it is, I think. I'm sure it's possible to release them as normal. It's a, it's a bit of an interesting situation we've got here, because looking ahead to the St Mirren game, I'm not actually convinced we're in a good position. But we wait and see with a little bit of trepidation. Uh, Rexham watching your Cliftonville save, yeah. Gary Caldwell, Wigan legend, absolutely. <clears throat> RIP stream, yes. Something's going on with YouTube at the minute. We'll get there eventually. Uh, Gary Caldwell, good Sterling lad, yeah, absolutely as well. Uh, Adi Yusuf joined Chesterfield. Did you hear about the furlough thing? Yes, it was interesting, wasn't it? But there's no point getting involved in the politics on here. Uh, Haji to PSG, by the way, one less threat. <laughs> it's ambitious. Fingers crossed, we'll get there in the end. We have got Olympiacos, which we thought we were going to get. But hopefully, it won't be the be-all and end-all. I think we're gradually just getting the stream back now. I think YouTube went down for a minute because I got an email to say, you're streaming and we've got a problem. But it will come back eventually. It looks like it just is now. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for all coming in. Please do chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't already. Hopefully you'll be able to see me moving again this time. It's happened actually for about three weeks now, this YouTube problem. Uh, Dylan, it's getting a bit better now. Good to hear. It's not, uh, unfortunately, given my previous history, it's not an internet thing or anything like that. Uh, it's something to do with the, the YouTube streaming. I'm not the most technical man, but uh, I've seen a few of the, the bigger boys complain about it as well. If it keeps happening, we might have to move over to Twitch. It's something I've... Um, not wanted to do is put it over a different roof but it seems to be a bit more reliable so potentially moving forward that's what it'll be dylan glad to hear it's getting better now <clears throat> friday night football for dunfermline v aberdeen aberdeen win it mockery's rating 9.3 he's still training well but he's not getting better that quickly considering how good he is in the the banger save with Celtic, uh, with Chelsea, sorry, does surprise me. Uh, heard about Anana? I haven't, no. Let me have a look, Ronak, bear with me. Uh, good player, probably wouldn't improve us, to be honest. Not quite at the standard we need. To be fair, I don't really think we've got the budget to do much more in a transfer window now. Uh, Olympiacos, tough draw exactly. So it could be a, an after being upset with me already because we failed to get third last year. You can see why they wanted third. And we could be at risk of an early season sacking. So it could be difficult. Oh, I have just seen the Anana thing. I'm going to have to look at that in a bit more detail. Well, the, all I'm going to say, the item that he's missing is a commonly prescribed medication in England for GP practices for patients. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a bit harsh on the face of it. It's not a performance enhance or anything like that. 
I don't really understand why drugs like that are on the ban list, but there you go. Uh, Dylan, Facebook Gaming. I don't know. I think if we went anywhere else, it would probably be Twitch, just because that's where most of the... After YouTube, that's where most of the audience is. So we've got to be in the place where most people are. I don't really use Facebook. And to be honest, there's quite a lot of... Um, it's the home to quite a lot of negativity in some areas. So I'd probably stick with Twitch, if any. All right, let's pick our squad, shall we? 20 players. We'll leave it at that. Mengi qualifies, as to the youngsters. And there's no point putting the injured Dembele in yet. Oh, I didn't put Mitchell in. Oh, you idiot. I mean, I think he's out injured anyway. Oh, I'm turning into Ajax. I'm Ajax with Sebastian Haller. I've not put my best left wing back in. I think he's going to miss the games anyway. But what a silly thing to do. All the players who aren't fit are going into the under-19s. Yeah, you got a one-year ban. It's a bit of a shame, really. For a common medication used in the NHS. And I don't, I don't get why... Well, it's when you see some of those medications, I don't get why they're banned. To be brutally honest. I, I'm going to have to look to see what that's going to do. It's got There's a link to it now, obviously. Why is it banned? Uh, because they can cause rapid late, uh, weight loss and ask, act as masking agents to other... All oh, right, okay. So it's because it can be... Oh, it can hide banned substances. Not that it's bad itself. I was going to say, it's such a common subject. A uh, sub, uh, substance used in the NHS. Very, very strange. Thank you to everyone joining along this morning as well. Lovely to have you all in. We're off to St Mirren and this is going to be a difficult game. We know Mitchell's out of this one. We've got to think about Thursday as well. Motherwell away next weekend. Probably be a largely backup side. I'm going to stick with the experimental tactic. Boys is going to make his debut a left wing back. Sporrell, maybe actually. Do I go Sporrell? I think I'm going to play boys for now because he's better defensively. But I won't rule it out later. Fuchs is going on to the bench. He's back to fitness. What else do we do? I think Jack Burns the one who's got to come out. He's not been great recently. Do I bring in Mockery or do I bring in Davenport? O'Reilly into the number 10. Davenport and Mallon in the middle. We'll get a ball winning midfielder in there. Although his attributes aren't as good for that now either. I think that's what we're going for. I'd quite like to put Duffy on the bench just so we've got wingers if we want to change tactic in this one. Because with Bolton and Sporrell there, maybe Glenn Ray's the one who can drop out. He's not quite so good. Fuchs, are they much of a muchness really? So I'm going to drop Ray out. Duffy's going to go in. And that gives us options to change tactic if we need to. So into the game we go. We're sticking with the back five for now. We'll see if it pays off for us. Hopefully it will. So I'm looking at that side. Jake Doyle Hayes is a good player. Jack Anik in goal well known of course. Some good players in the defence. Jamie Hansen. He's at our derby side in the head coach. And Ted Amengi, our defender, is at Derby in real life. So let's go and get into the first half. It's got to be a better result today, or we might have to go back to the old tactic. And straight away, it's St Mirren on the attack. Matheson heads to the throwaway. And it's absolutely no one there. It's so easy for St Mirren. McPherson, back to Shaughnessy. Why to Pufion? Up to Irwin. Oh, it's in already. Second minute again. We cannot get past two minutes without losing. Uh, grassroots coach, will you be watching the Europa Conference League next season? It sort of depends. Because is it on the game supposed to be at the same time as the Europa League? In which case, most people will watch the Europa League, surely. Unless they're going to show all the conference games at six and all the Europa League games at eight, maybe. Because they're both supposed to be Thursday night. 
So I'm not sure how that's going to work. But in general terms, yes, I'd like to watch it. What I'd love to do is... It's a shame in England they're all going on BT again. I wish they would go on free-to-air TV. It'd be a great way to get people into the game. Obviously, there'll be an English side in there, but there'll be a lot of other UK teams as well. As Malin crosses, Shankland's there. Lawrence Shankland off the mark. Didn't take as long as last season. Hopefully, it'll be a little bit better. Marlon Pack. He's a midfielder, isn't he? Marlon Pack plays for... Um, who did we have him at last year? Was it Salford, maybe? I'm sure it was Salford we had Marlon Pack at. And obviously, the, the big question with the Europa Conference is, will it get launched last year, next year, because of the, the current situation in the world? But there are some, some good ones in there. I hope it will work. It's just whether it happens. Whether it happens and how it clashes with the Europa League. But I'm looking forward to it as a general idea. I think it's brilliant for teams in the likes of Northern Ireland and Scotland and Wales. And the Republic as well. Should give more opportunities. And it gives an opportunity in FM. We've seen it already with Bangor City. As O'Reilly gets it out to McNulty on the left. Back to Stevie Mallon. Clashes with the referee. Switches it right to Matheson. Can we get in the lead? Need to get balls into the box here. Davenport's picked it up. Matheson again. Has to cross. Has to cross. Cuts it into O'Reilly. There we go. 2-1 Dundee United. And it's starting to look good. It's starting to look better. And fingers crossed we're getting there. Marlon Pack, he plays for Cardiff, I think, Dylan. I think he's there now, yeah. Was it Pompey he was at? But we definitely had him at Salford last year. He was a superstar in that holding role. But yeah, he's Cardiff at the minute. Good player, but 31, £5 million, pounds, 16 grand a week. Just not affordable, unfortunately. As it happens, Hamilton are losing at Livingston, who have started really well. They battered St Johnston on the road on the first day. And we're looking like getting our first win here, as Boys finds McNulty. O'Reilly plays a 1-2 with him. Coming down the left, he's got acres of space, has to score here. Drags his shot wide. Is this the season where McNulty's sublime form runs out and he turns into his normal performance? Hey, United, to be fair to them, still scoring goals without Darren Watson. They're doing all right. So we've got a warning to close down Irving. Stevie Mallon picks it up on the left-hand side. He's got two men with him. Goes back to Davenport. Good football. McNulty to Boys. Into McNulty again. Keeper comes and claims. Excellent work. Smothers it at the feet. Boys has actually had a poor game at left wing back. So I will take him off after this. As it's fallen to Hansen at right back. What we don't want to do... Is concede an equaliser before that. Boys nicks it this time though. That's excellent play. Maybe he doesn't need to come off. McNulty gets it on the left. Beats his man. Gets into the box. And it's straight at Anik. What I want to know is why that. I was going to say why it doesn't improve his rating. But it has. Up to 6.6. .6, but it's been a good debut. So we're going to replace Mark McNulty with Darren Watson. We're going to replace Davenport with Chris Mockery. And he'll swap positions with O'Reilly, I think. They don't really make much of a difference there. Mockery's natural in both. And then at left wing back, Moyes will be replaced by Sporrell. Boys, sorry. Will be replaced by Sporrell. And we'll just try and see it out. Our first win with a back three of the season. Uh, you're not being daft, Dylan. He definitely does play there. Oh, Marlon Pack's an excellent player. Pelestri on loan will never be able to get him wage-wise. Uh, look up the Juventus squad. I can do. Um, obviously, we haven't got the Italian league loaded, so it won't be in as much depth, but we'll have a look. Uh, seventh place English team, yeah. So for the big nations, it's one less Europa League place and the bottom one goes into the conference. So sort of like the... We had it with Dorkin last year, didn't we? When we finished sixth and seventh. And it sort of depends on who wins the FA Cup as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's a competition that through the English sides, we've seen a bit. As Matheson goes back to Kerr, gets rid of it long here to Watson, loses out in the air. We can't throw this away. Finley makes a brilliant challenge. Mengi downfield. Watson picks it up. Beats two men. Stun him from Darren Watson. Gets himself in. Dinks it over the keeper. And he's off the line by Tate. Almost a stunning solo goal. 
And what a welcome back that would have been, as the header away is going to be chased down by Tate. Please don't concede a stoppage time equaliser. It's exactly what we've done. We're going to get sacked here. I can just tell it. We're going to get sacked this season. I mean, we were lucky enough to survive it last year. But we're just so poor. So poor. The back three, the thing I don't get about the back three is how when we're playing deliberately to get teams to go narrow, how a back three can't mark one striker. It's absolutely astonishing. Irving runs off and the three of them all completely ignore him. It's becoming a big concern. The, the problem I have with a, a back three in FM is that it doesn't match how a back three works in real life, which the back four, it does perfectly. And I think that's the thing I find frustrating because I want it to be as realistic as possible. And I feel with a back three, it's not. I mean, we did it at Dorking for a year or two last year. And it was just every game was three all or four all. And it's not like we're overexposing a team. We're trying to play the right way. We're trying to force the team out wide, get them to cross it. And then we've got free centre half to deal with it. But they just don't mark here. Even with man marking, even with tight marking instructions, they all just leave them at sea. It's very hard to take. But we've got Olympiakos up next. And it's whether we continue the experiment or go back to the well-known after that. Uh, Ronak, we've got Mengi on loan. We've got Mengi already this season. He's been on loan with us the whole save, actually. Oh, oh, I thought that was us for a minute. But yeah, Ted Mengi is our starting centre-half. He's not playing particularly well in a back three, though. And that's something else, isn't it? When playing a back four this year in FM, the centre-halves always get excellent ratings. They've been really poor in this one. Very weird. I'll tell you what I'm going to try for the next game. The tactic always recommends a covering defender. I'm going to take that out. So I reckon that's leaving us a bit too deep and a bit too exposed there. Otherwise, we'll stick with what we've got. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at Juventus, won't we? Uh, so if we go to Syria, because they're called something else, aren't they? Always forgetting all the other games they're called something else. Well, a key player in Season 3 is still Ronaldo at 37 years of age. Losing a bit of the physical, but he's not getting any worse. Let's put it that way. Wonder what his tallies are like. Yeah, 18 and 20 goals in the last two seasons. Uh, so I guess the main thing is transfers, isn't it? So, sold. They sold the young Swede wonder kid for, wow, 100 million. He's got to be the best player in the world, looking at that. They've signed Kunde from Sevilla, Sabitza from Leipzig, Chiesa from Fiorentina, good player. Uh, Tonali, Asensio, Luis Suarez, not the Luis Suarez, no, it's the other one. Elverdi from Gladbach. Sold some of the older boys, and Pellegrini, Regani went to United, Demiral, Benton Coral to the Premier League. And first season sold to Barla. To Liverpool and Ramsey to Manchester United. Interesting transfer history, I'd call it. Uh, can you look at Morton? We will do. Uh, Josh, hi, I'm a Dundee United fan. I'm catching up with the stream, so I won't be here for long, but great series. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for coming along. Do appreciate it, as always. Thank you to everyone in this morning. Please do chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't yet. Let's go down to the championship and have a quick look at Morton. So, key player, Aidan Nesbitt, still there, still doing well. Uh, I'm just trying to look through the squad again. We're probably going to be reliant on transfers, aren't we? So, as you'd expect, quite a big overhaul. They've lost Lewis Strap to air in the SPL there. It's a bit of a shame because he's an academy prospect. Loads of young free agents. Chuck Sanike, I guess, as an Englishman, stands out. Ryan McLaughlin, is that the Irish right back? It is. Northern Irish, sorry. Lots of players in season two as well. More youngsters in that season than anything else. Cammy Smith, he came in from us, didn't he? Uh, a few more players out. It wasn't a massive overhaul. 
but lots of young players added. And in the first season, a few of the boys sold. Interesting. Aaron Presley on loan from Brentford. Good player. That's quite an interesting season. Our Nathan Austin, we had him at uh, Cliftonville last year. He's still there. Um, interestingly, I don't know if I agree with the policy. <laughs> it doesn't look great, does it? So in terms of the United youth team, obviously we've got Mengi. But if you look at players like Palestri is out at Celtic. So we can't get him. He's in a different league. The sort of ones we would normally have aimed at at the start are the likes of Ethan Laird, of Brandon Williams or whatever. But they're all on so much money. And we can't afford to contribute more than four and a half grand a week in wages. So all of these guys earning 15 grand or more, we can't do anything with. Joe Hugo even on 10 grand now. And he's probably not better than Shankland. <clears throat> so this is where we got to this sort of difficult stage here. We want to promote the youngsters and benefit the team longer term. But what's actually happened is finishing third in the first season has really harmed us. Because the board expectations are no longer realistic. They think we're going to do better than we are. <clears throat> and if we don't get into the group stages of the Europa Conference here, we're in big trouble. And I don't know how we recover from it. So it's going to be quite an interesting stint to see if that's something we're able to manage. Because without that, I think we're going to be in a bit of a pickle. So we've got a couple of youngsters going out on loan. Hamilton have come in for Colt and Morris again, offering big money. But I want him to go to England. I don't want him to go to the club that stopped us getting third last year. Particularly given the way we've started the season here. And we're going to find out now, if we get past Olympiacos, who we're going to get. Because don't forget, it's not just Olympiacos and then you're in the group stages. Olympiacos is the first of two playoffs. So let's just draw all the teams and see who it's going to be. Because we could be kissing goodbye to our chances. Right, if we get through, we've got either Ferovar of Hungary, who have got some pretty poor youngsters there in truth. In terms of their squad quality, right, we would fancy our chances against them. The other team, though, the ones we're more likely to face, are Zurich of the Swiss Super League. And their squad, slightly better. No, it is better. It was just one poor player we found first. So that's going to be a pretty even game if we get to that one. The problem, though, in the meantime, is that we've got Olympiacos. So that tie that's the winnable one, we might not even get to. Uh, Mark, last of the port party, good morning. Thank you for popping in, do appreciate it. Uh, Ronak, again, Tanganga starts the series on 25 grand a week. So unfortunately, there's just no way you can get those sorts of players at Dundee United. It's sort of the equivalent of low championship League One standard. I mean, Tanganga's still on 25 grand a week. Yes, he's in the Spurs under 23s, but they want 25 grand a week to get him on loan. And we can't afford it. Uh, Seagrest is trying to force his way out, apparently. Um, and he's not going anywhere. He will be back for this game, though, which does make a difference. Tyrick Mitchell won't. And even if he was, we haven't registered him. So he's not going to play. So let's get to the press conference. We'll just get through it. And this first leg is going to determine whether we bother to stay for the second. Uh, don't worry if you get sacked, just do a new save with Foggia. I'll be, I'll, what I will do if I get sacked genuinely is see what sort of jobs are going on here. Because I would like to take over another club. But don't forget, we've got such a small reputation. Right, so I can add Mitchell back in now, can't I? I get my extra chance. So my blushes have been spared. So I'm not quite as bad as Ajax. That's another young Premier League player we've got on loan. Carlton Morris is off to Wigan. £400,000 there. Uh, let's have a look at Jaffet Mata. Um, so he's not in the save just because we've only got the British leagues loaded. So a bit harder there. Right. It says Tyrick Mitchell can play. And surely I have to put my best 11 out. 
I think I'm going to make a small change to the defence with Kerr and Mengi switching sides. I think I'm going to play Mitchell. What was his injury? Oh, it's a hamstring. I can't do it. Boys will start left wing back again. Do I keep that the same? Do I go back 4-4-2? Segrist is in in goal. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm going to stick with it, but we might go 4-4-2 at half-time if we have to. It's Dundee United via Olympiacos. Look at some of the players they've got. Even on the ones we've got to close down, they're superstars. Oh, Jaffet, sorry. Stefan Johansson, Rajan Engelund, Charlie Masonda, Kevin Vimmer, Rafinha, Cafu. That is some side. No, he's not in the game, um, Ronak. Just because of the league's loaded. He's not there. Well, I don't really know what to say about this game. I think we're going to struggle. And Olympiacos are straight on the front foot. We've conceded in the first minute, the second minute, and now it's the third. Is it going to happen again? Oh, it is. Oh, my God. How can we have an extra centre-half in and be so weak in the middle defending across? There's three of them marking two players, and they're not marking them. I think the back three experiment's going to be over, because you can start to see why I get annoyed by it. As Malin crosses to Mengi, his header hits the bar. The free kick's given for offside anyway. Oh, why did I change to a back three? I knew it wasn't going to work. I didn't trust myself. As O'Reilly, the number 10, has picked it up at the edge of his own box. Why he's so deep, I don't know. Masonda back in again. I mean, is it just because they don't understand the tactic? They're not prepared and well drilled in it yet. But they're not following any of the instructions. Sissy's back into Cafo. Malin nicks it. O'Reilly back to Mengi. Over the top, he's got the chance to go. Turns back. It's so negative. Kerr goes over the top when the option's not on. The defender misses it, though. McNulty gets in by luck. Rounds the keeper and then hits it straight at the defender's leg. He was already on the floor. Could have taken one more touch. Gone wide up. Tapped it in. Didn't. Malin can cross the corner. Can we get back on terms? McNulty loses out. Out to Mallon on the right-hand side again. Chance to cross. Shanklin's there. And he's offside as well. It's becoming a very frustrating morning. Oh, we've got a few Premier League youngsters on loan. Yeah, Mark, we were talking about this tactical experiment. We've tried to fit in three of our best four players who are centre-halves, and it hasn't worked. But we have got Premier League youngsters, but they have to be the ones that our scouts have found. Uh, Nangolin at 40 years old. He can't be that old. Oh, he did it straight after you said it, didn't he? Straight after you said it, he got the goal. <sighs> Again, the performance hasn't been bad. The phases of play going forward are very good in the back five. But in FM, as I've said, it just isn't realistic defensively. You force them wide to deliberately get the crosses in. And it doesn't work. I'm going to gamble. Let's go back to the old school. Who have we got on? Who needs to come off? So, Mengi can go right back for now. Kerr will go centre half with Finley. Matheson's there. Can he play right midfield? He can. So, Matheson's going to go right wing for now. Davenport apparently can play left wing. Not that I'm convinced by that. So, he's going to come off for Michael Duffy. And I think we'll leave it at that. One change made. The 4-4-2 is back. Let's go positive as well. Let's really throw ourselves at this and try and get on top. The name curse, exactly. So we've got scouts run at looking at youngsters in those leagues. But unless they pop up naturally, we won't be signing them. And we haven't got the money, really. Duffy gets it wide to Moings. On the left-hand side... Uh, boy, I keep calling him Moyes. His name's Morgan Boys. It's throwing me because it's M Boys. Minley, uh, Finley picks it up. I'm calling him by the M as well now. Oh, out to Duffy. This formation's really affecting me. Mallon flicks it on. McNulty down. Shankland in over the bar. Better though. Much, much better. 
And it's who do we take off next? Do we go back to last season? Take Kerr off, put Mengi in the middle. Oh, my word. Or do we take Finley off for missing that head up, which is absolutely inexcusable? How's his rating gone up for that? He missed the header and let the man in one-on-one. -on -one. It says Mengi's frustrated. So, you know what? I'm just going to take him off. Matheson off. Uh, to right back, sorry. Burn on on the right wing. And then... McNulty's frustrated. He's been poor all season so far. So, I'm going to bring on Darren Watson. It's not a good time for Mark McNulty to go off the boil. I really think we're going to go out of Europe here. And if we don't reach the group stages... If we don't get in a top three in the league quickly, we will get sacked. Darren Watson hasn't missed that. He was the top scorer in the league last season. And he's just missed from three yards unmarked. Matheson finds O'Reilly in the middle to Mallon. Time on the ball. Back to Matheson again. We're keeping it nicely. Now can we get the goal? Vimmer heads away as far as Byrne. Flicks it onto Shankland. There's a man in the middle. Watson's got to score this time. And he does. First goal back at the club. Brilliant stuff. Loads for air last season. One for us. And albeit we're still heavy underdogs with this result. It is a lifeline. Ronak, which positions are we shortest? That's a good question actually. Oh, he's done it again. Darren Watson with a header. We've got a new hero. Darren Watson makes it 2-1 to Dundee United. Oh, what a moment. What a moment. What position do we need players? That's the thing. We've largely got a pretty strong squad, as Vimmer's got himself sent off there. I guess midfield is where we're weakest, but we're going to stick with a mid 4 4 2 now. We're going to have to. Finley's in, heads just over. I know it means one of our brilliant centre halves misses out each week, but we can't not play this tactic when it's working that much better. We shouldn't have ever wavered, really. How we've only got two goals, I don't know. Our expected goals is above three now, and as it stands. Only getting two might come back to haunt us. It is a win on the night, but Olympiakos got that away goal. But a win should build the confidence. Hopefully, it will mean something for us going forward. It will give us that positive edge we need. We'll be able to compete as we move forward. Darren Watson, super sub with two goals. Absolute gen, absolute hero. He's going to be the one. Thank you to everyone joining along as well. Please do chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't already. Let's go. And have a quick look at how the other side got on. Because there was two of us in here. I'm not sure who the other one was from Scotland. Spot the Scottish team is the question. Who have I missed there? I'm sure there would have been another Scottish team at this stage, wouldn't there? So there are us. Oh, there it is. Motherwell beat Slavia Prague 2-1. So that's on a knife edge as well. We could yet both go out. So I wouldn't get too excited yet. And we've still got to worry about this domestic form. We're now going to have to rotate for the weekend. And we're already in a position where we don't know if we're going to get through. Uh, our budget is, we've got £2 million and five grand on the wage bill. I don't really want to spend the transfer budget because that's based on us going into the Europa Conference and the Europa League last season, which we're not going to do now, as you can see. So that, last season, that stopped us losing money. The year before, we lost around a million pounds during the season. So we've got to write a million off that at least. And the problem is with the scout reports, we're just not getting better players, which we like to rely on. There's brilliant youngsters in there, lots of good Premier League and Championship youngsters, but none of them are ready at the moment, despite that being what we're asking the scout for. I'm going to have a look at this guy, though, because Nathan Baxter has popped up and he might be good enough. Yes, he wants a big wage again, though. He wants to be the highest paid player at the club. And he's our second best goalkeeper if he comes in. That's what's annoying me. Is I don't want to break the bank financially in terms of of wages. Uh, Ron Ack, we'll have a look at any of the players. But we, we can only sign them if they come up organically. So like the scout reports, rumours, playing with them, those sort of things. 
uh, grassroots coach, what you could do is look at the media 11 for Scottish Championship League One prospects. Well, what we've got, we've got the scout assignment set up to watch the Premier League Under-23 League, the Scottish Championship, Scottish League One, uh, English League One and League Two. That's where our five scout reports are. I think we might have had the Northern Irish League as well. So it is there. It's just the fact that it's not... It's picking up a lot of future players. We have to change some of them to look for first team players instead. But obviously the domestic seasons haven't started down south yet. So these are all the players that have been playing in international under-21s or all of those sorts of things. But as it stands, with two games left in the morning, we desperately need to get our first win. And in fact, we might even do the second leg of Olympiacos to start Tuesday night. We'll see. But Motherwell away, who again are bottom of the league. Uh, Rhys McNaughton, thank you for popping in. Appreciate it. Uh, how are Hearts doing? I think they're still in the championship. They are. They're still in the championship in this save. So they've done much better in some of the others. They've just lost at home to Alloa, which probably doesn't fill anyone with confidence. Um, but in their first two seasons, they finished second both years and then lost in the playoffs. But when you consider that the likes of A United have come up and finished mid-table in the Premier League, that's interesting. Um, Ron, act strengthen your scout staff. We've got adverts out. Um, but again, we can't use the staff search screen either. So we're not just going to go and get the best scouts because that would obviously be unrealistic. Our current scouts are pretty good though. I will say that. Our director of football, fairly good. Good at ability, potential and negotiation. The technical director, pretty good. Even better probably in the similar areas. The chief scout, David Byrne, very solid and English. So he's got that understanding and that knowledge of players down south we've got the german gerhard tremel who's a very solid scout at 14 and 14 uh banuas same again from germany has worked in england too northern irish scout and stuart harvey who's got exceptional knowledge and the understanding of northern ireland and then we've just brought in this portuguese guy jao ferreira who again is excellent from the scouts he's been at man united and he's got that extra knowledge of europe so hopefully He's going to be the one that really makes it tick for us. Because they are the three most recent additions. Tremel, Harvey and Ferreira. So they're the three that I hope will make the big difference for us. But of course that will take a month or two to start to work. Thank you to all the new faces and the regulars popping in as well. Do appreciate seeing you here today. Let's make our decision on Motherwell shall we. I think we have to go reserves. And I think we have to go back to 4-4-2. We'll accept it was an experiment that didn't work. And today, we're going to go for a different lineup. So Seagrist can still start. He's coming back from injury. Right back will be Ralston for the first time. Left back will be Boys because Mitchell will be fit for the second leg. At centre half, we're going to go for Jason Kerr and Matty Pearson. I could go Nielsen, but I don't know with the youngsters. Do I go Nielsen? Let's do it. We could sell Pearson on then in theory. Into midfield, we've got Sporrell on the left, Bolton on the right, Fuchs and Ray in the middle, although Davenport could be there as well. No, he's dropped in quality already, so we're going to go for Ray instead. I'm not sure who the better footballer is of the two. Neither of them are great on the ball. But Fuchs seems to be better in the box-to-box the -box attributes. He's got the more attacking ones. Uh, on the wings, we've done already. And then up front is going to be McNulty. I'm going to save Watson for Thursday. Because why not after that performance? And McNulty will play alongside Finn Malcolm. On the bench, we'll go for Watson again in case needed. Duffy. Oh, we've got Mockery as well. He could start. Let's start Mockery ahead of Ray. He's a better deep line playmaker anyway. Davenport can be on there. Uh, defensively, Matty Pearson. And then it's just who else, really. Jack Byrne could be one of them. But we probably need a sort of fullback or something like that. So maybe Matheson. 
Let's do it. Motherwell away. Back upside. We're resting everyone for Europe. And we're getting a tactic sorted. Uh, when will I be on FM? <laughs> Mark, speak nicely to the club for, for Scout. <laughs> When will I be on FM? I don't know. You tell me. What's your What's your likely chance? Um, it's not as fun as you think. I'm rubbish in the game. Yeah, I work with a uh, a physio who's on the game as well, and he just said, "Ah, oh, it's exciting at first when you get the contacts or you get the the demographic detail check from the club researcher, but otherwise, there's not much to it." Good knowledge of France, England, and excellent knowledge of Italy. <laughs> Look him up on YouTube. Teddy Oku for Balloon. Ah, fair enough. I always like seeing a little unearthed gems. There's always a few about. A Seagrist has got the ball early on with a long kick to Sporrell. We look a bit more natural with four players going forward there. And he's back to Boys and now Mockery. Sporrell up to McNulty. Mockery in the middle again. Good flick on. Finn Malcolm's in. Oh, he's hit the crossbar. He didn't need to take it for first time. He did, and he nearly scored a screamer with it. But as it stands, it's been an even game. We're on the front foot again with boys to Sporrell. We've dropped to balanced rather than positive as Finn Malcolm's in again. Back to Sporrell again, just wide at the post again. It's just not happening at the minute. Now, grassroots coach, I've suggested him to my boss as a player to buy at season's end. We'll see if it happens or not. As the ball comes into the box, headed away by Nielsen. Mockery's trying to get there, but Sanders will be first. And we still don't look convincing, to be honest. As the ball gets out to Cole on the right, Carroll picks it up in the middle. And Motherwell are just playing around us here. Helton, our former player, tries to find a through ball. Boys heads away. Sanders gets the ball again, and now O'Hara. Lovely switch out to O'Donnell, the Scottish international and the former Luton man. Delivers into Cole and it doesn't matter whether we have a back four or a back five. We cannot defend crosses. We have spent so many training sessions doing this. Nearly every session the two weeks before the season was defending out wide, was defending crosses and was defending set pieces. And we have conceded without fail almost every single goal from those exact routes of play. And when it gets to that stage, there's not much more you can do as a manager. You have to accept that you have your limitations. So again, it's been a poor performance. There is no way we are going to finish third while we're rebuilding this team. And there's no way we're going to reach the European group stages. And if both of those things have failed, we're going to get sacked fairly early this season. Uh, Ron, when will you be live? Uh, so every... Sunday morning at 10.30 and every Tuesday evening at 5.30. They're my two a week. Just because they're my two days off work. As Motherwell are getting in behind again with Stevenson. To O'Donnell. Time on the right hand side. Cuts it back to Sanders. He gets it inside to Halton, our former player. Who's had a brilliant game against us. Gives it away there though. Ralston up to McNulty. Malcolm gives it away. I don't know what's happened to Mark McNulty. Honestly... Does not look like he's ever kicked a football before this season. As sadly he gets it. Out wide again. Even playing wide with two wingers and two fullbacks. We're getting absolutely skinned on the flanks. As Houghton gives it to O'Hara. And again we've got caught over. Ralston up. Diaby heads away. We cannot get out. It is all Motherwell. And they're in again here. It's going to be two. It is two. Absolutely disgraceful. Chris Mockery is having a shocking game. Why did we start him ahead of Ray? Watson's going to come on for McNulty. We need two goals from the super sub again. But the way we're defending, even that won't be enough. Who else do we bring on? I just don't know. Michael Duffy or Jack Byrne, perhaps. Byrne will come on for Luke Bolton. But I am not confident. I genuinely don't understand... I'm, I'm really puzzled. I've never, probably in three or four FMs, managed to side that tactically frustrate me as much as this team. Of course, we had the honeymoon the first season. Everything we touched turned to gold. But the tactics aren't panning out the same way. As Watson gets in behind, nearly scores again. But even he's missing them now. 
Oh, there's frustration here. Uh, Carl, good morning. How's Tom Ince? Not too bad. Made his first appearance off the bench yesterday. Worked really hard, but didn't get a chance going forward. Um, but hopefully good things to come. And one month, I have 50 players shortlisted from the French National. Some real quality technically, but positioning can be questionable. It's one of the things that happens defensively a lot now. Get training sorted once and save it. Makes a massive difference to fatigue. It does, but the defensive side of the set pieces and the wide areas, again, look from the crosses. We're so fragile. Houghton shoots. It's blocked. O'Hara's blocked. Long's in. Oh, my word. What chance do you have if your number one goalkeeper is letting those in? He was on the floor before the ball even left the striker's feet. And then it came straight to him. And he went over it. He just went like that so the ball could run underneath. That's astonishing goalkeeping. Look at the defensive ratings there. There's not a huge amount you can do when individual performances are that poor. How some of them can be demotivated. We have been battered there. I don't mean to be rude. I'm almost waiting to get sacked now. Look, here we go. The players are coming in and it's, it's Seagrist. Seagrist is coming in to complain about my team talk. He saw the goals he let in, didn't he? I'm going all out now. There is no risk in it because I'm not enjoying this job. Yep, there you go. I think it's pathetic. I'm going to kick the chair. Let's go. It's not something I do in real life, but let's go. Yep. Won't take the lack of professionalism. I'm still kicking the chair. I mean, I don't know how many chairs are left because I've already kicked one and it's still giving me the option. So there must be a few going about. Seagrist has been complaining all summer. I don't think we're coming back from this. I really don't. Can we have a look to see if there are any jobs about, just in case? This snow this morning has been like your, like your Dundee United team. Uh, what's happened to your team, Carl? I don't know. Defence are shocking in this game, no matter who you have. I disagree with that, Brian. Welcome along. But in the back four, in the other two safes, we've managed to get really solid defences, really hard-working ones. But the fragility from crosses here, with probably the best centre-halves I've got in any of my saves, is really frustrating. And it's not like it's just, oh, they're weak in the air and they're poor-heading. They're cut backs, their balls across the box on the, on the low-drilled crosses. We're, we're weak from all of them. And the fullbacks are pretty solid as well. So it is frustrating. There's no real jobs available. So we will have to wait a month or two if we get sacked. But we will finish the morning by travelling to Olympiacos. And I tell you what, it might get taken out of our hands if we lose that. It's a C. They're pleased because we're on course to reach the group stage. That's one of the only positives going for us. And if we go out to Olympiacos, that one positive's gone. <laughs> So let's get ahead to Thursday. I'll catch up with the chat in a moment. And we'll get into this absolutely crucial game. We've got battered in both tactics. We've looked okay in both tactics. A thank you to all the new faces and the regulars coming along as well. Lovely to see so many of you here this morning. So many new faces as well. It's great to see. Uh, sacked in the morning, Carl. I wouldn't be shocked if we lose this one. I don't think it will happen instantly. But given our league position as well, I think after five games... They start to judge you on your league position overall. So when we get to that stage, we might be in trouble. I was planning to play a few games off camera in this, but I think now we're probably going to have to stay on for the next one on Tuesday night because we might well have a sack in on our hands. And let's be honest, it's been about a year coming here. It all started to go wrong in the Europa League group stages last year. There we go. Look at that. How many players are unhappy with our management of the team? 1, 2, 3, 13, 14 players. I'm just going to kick the chair. I'm so angry at them. Well, half of them are pleased. To be fair, it worked for a fair few of them. Most importantly, it worked for Shankland. It worked for Glenn Ray, who's the vice captain. It worked for O'Reilly, who starts. 
And all of the plans it didn't work for. It's just Seagrest again. We're going to pump the fists. We're going to say... It was very productive. Because I've sorted out most of the players I wanted to. And now those players need to respond tonight. So let's go and make the changes they suggest. And let's see what we've got left. Right, McNulty out. Watson in. On the wings, it's going to be... Uh, Jack Burns, one who's throwing his toys out the pram. So we're going to go for Bolton and Duffy, I think. Yeah. Bolton on the right, Duffy on the left. Mallon and O'Reilly in the middle. At the back, Finley's let down, so it's going to be Kerr and Mengi. And then the two fullbacks. Mitchell's back from injury, so let's stick with him. Don't forget, with all the doom and gloom, we're 2-1 up in this tie. We are still the favourites to get through. Spore and Finley on the bench, so I'll drop boys out for Fuchs. McNulty's there. Mockery's been poor in recent weeks, so we'll replace him with Glen Ray. And let's get into it. 4-4-2 for the second leg against Olympiacos. Worked a treat in the second half of the first leg, and now it needs to work today. Uh, Justin Ball, welcome along. Thank you for popping in. Uh... Lukaku to Rangers. Yeah, it's Jordan Lukaku it is. Um, what does the assistant recommend for formation and tactic? 4-4-2. They've recommended. But it wasn't working last season and he kept picking the same players or going for the same setup. Has Masonda's got a corner early on for Olympiacos? Oh my word. Have we got five minutes into any game this season without conceding? In fact, have we got four minutes into any game without conceding? We're out on away goals as it stands. I don't, I don't know what to say. I'm genuinely hoping we get sacked now so we can start again somewhere else. Because this, after an unbelievable first season, has turned into an absolute disaster. Uh, Jacob, the Bangor City team would tear up that Dundee United defence. Completely agree. The problem is, the Bangor City defence has much less good defenders. I mean, you're comparing people like Mengi, Kerr and Finley to, te uh, to Cameron Badebo and even Press. And Owen Tull, they're nowhere near as good. But they defend the box well. And these guys, I don't know what it is. As Watson tries to get on the end of the long kick, the header finds Duffy. Down the left-hand side, slides in for Shankland. It's 1-1 on the night. Crucial away goal. I don't mind getting sacked on league form, but I want to reach the European group stages. We do that two years in a row, and hopefully that gives us a, a better job down the line. Don't forget we won the Scottish League Cup as well. We've got a trophy in the cabinet. The CV and the repertoire is not too bad. The reputation and the coaching badges are. As Cyrus shoots from distance, Seagrass saves one that's straight at him. It's a miracle. It's an absolute miracle. Seagrass to save something. As you might be able to tell, I'm getting quite frustrated here. This will be the final game of the morning, as we're voting for the 12 o'clock anyway. It is exactly the same goal on repeat over and over again. Crossing from the wide area, which we're supposed to be closing down and preventing. The, for the centre forward peels onto the fullbacks. The centre halves don't mark. And there we go. 2-1, just like that. The only tie that leads to extra time, but I can assure you we will concede again. But can we score again? Shanklin flicks on for Watson. He's in one-on-one. -on -one. Darren Watson's done it again. He has got no attributes or quality in terms of rating. McNulty's a far better player. Finn Malcolm's as good. But he scored 26 in the league for Air United last year. And he's absolutely flying for us with three goals in a game and a half against Olympiacos. What a player. And at the moment, Olympiacos need four to get through. Because the away goals is now in our advantage. So this is the problem, is that we're relying on these strikers to score us 10 goals a game. Because we're scoring three and not winning most weeks. As Mitchell gets it to O'Reilly, Shankland on, it's the post, the rebound's in. We are through. We are not going to concede five. Watson's tired, McNulty on, can he come in the goal drought? What a game, eh? Who said we didn't love this Dundee United side? It is 5-3 on aggregate, 3-2 on the night, and out of nowhere, we have scored two goals. 
Bolton's going to be replaced by Jack Byrne. We'll try and get a bit of confidence back into him. And that's all it's going to take, really. Stevie Mallon's in a similar position. We'll bring on Fuchs for him with 25 to go. And now it's just about seeing it out comfortably. I'm trying to look at the other tie for who we might be facing. Well, I think that might be a Europa League tie. And it's seeing who goes out of that. As Masonda picks it up on the left. What we don't want is a grandstand finish. Look at the marking. There's no one near him. Masonda goes the length. Puts it into the box. Rafina on the right. Takafu. His shot's blocked as well. And it falls back to him. The shape is much better. But we're still just as fragile from crosses. As Duffy flicks it forward. Shanklin's got there. Puts McNulty in. He's beat the first man. Can he end the goal drought? Mark McNulty to the edge. Back to O'Reilly. This has turned into a stunning attacking performance. And it's the side we've never doubted of this team. We have never doubted the strike force. But defensively, we are not going to score three or more goals in every game to win it. We conceded three against Motherwell. Three against Rangers. Two against St Mirren, including one in the last minute when we should have been more concerned. And we've now conceded two here as well. Fuchs has nicked it high up. I mean, what's happening here? Is they're chasing the game and they've sent everyone forward. And it's playing right into our hands. But the team sitting behind us and breaking on us, we can't compete with. Uh, Jacob Segrist is a solid goalkeeper. Should ruin the finances by spending a whole wage budget on him before he gets sacked. He's a good keeper. He was brilliant for us first season. But then he wanted triple the money. Then he stopped performing. And now I've had to strip him of captaincy, because which he was happy with, by the way. Because he's just causing chaos. That's a big moment. That's big. Shanklin flicks on for McNulty, who ends the goal drought. A beautiful finish into the corner. And now it's 5-2 to Dundee United. Where on earth has this come from? That needs to be the start of something. We'll find out, obviously, next time if it is. Let's go and see who we're facing in the playoff for the Europa Conference. But if we get to the group stages, we might just hold on to our job, despite the awful start in the SPL. So we're playing Zurich as we expected. That one's next Thursday. Hamilton's a big game at the weekend. They finished third and stopped us getting to the Europa League last season. So we will come straight back for that one on Sunday. A massive thank you for watching. A massive thank you for supporting my range of emotions today. Thank you for all the thumbs up. Thank you for putting up with the YouTube problems early on. And hopefully I will see you next time. Because this has been quite an interesting morning for us to say the least. We've done our very best to compete at the top level. We've been absolutely woeful domestically. And hopefully it won't last. Uh, do you think the game is a bit consistent? Say you'll get a massive result, then drop points at a small game. Does it happen to you or just me? I wouldn't say it's a huge issue. With Bangor City, we've had runs where we couldn't beat anyone, but largely we've been very good. And in the head coach, I mean, it's just been a meteoric rise, so that's probably not one to judge it on. Um, but I'm not... I wouldn't say it's a problem in game. It's definitely a problem with the mentality of this side. So what we might do, actually... Is just go and scout for someone who's a model pro. I think that's possibly our best option now. Let's get a couple of real good characters in the squad. Because if we go and have a look at the mentoring groups very quickly before we go. It's the one thing that we haven't really got. We've got a couple of fairly professional. One resolute. But if you have a look through the squad. There's not those big strong experienced personalities. And I feel like in addition to, to Jacob Davenport. We might need one or two of those. But we will be back for Hamilton, for Zurich in the double header to qualify for the group stages, for St Johnston and for the end of the transfer window. I'll play the Kilmarnock game off camera in the League Cup because I'm not worried about that. And then we will be back next Thursday for more European football. Thank you all for your kind support this morning. Thank you for joining me as always. I hope you're keeping well and I will see you on Tuesday night at 530 for the European playoff. A massive one. I'll see you there.